you're looking to dive into topics on how to live a happier, healthier, more fit, and long lifespan, then you've come to the right podcast. Living the dream with me, Coach Damian Evans. Together, we will explore the topics on all things health, fitness, and wellness. Together, we will be lifelong learners on this journey to living the ultimate dream. What up, dream team? Coach D here coming at you with another growth mini-sode. This will be a bite-sized episode with the goal of setting a growth-minded intention and focus for the upcoming week. Each mini-sode will offer a quote that encapsulates the theme of the week. And after the quote, we're going to dive into a weekly focus, something small that we can concentrate on for the following seven days, as well as a physical activity tip and a nutritional tip that will help assist us in working towards a more healthy and optimal way of living our own dream life. And each mini-sode will end with a recommendation for the week. The recommendation could be anything from a podcast episode to listen to, a book to read, or even an article or paper. Something that I feel will help us better educate ourselves towards the overall focus of the week. If this is your first time listening to a mini-sode, the goal is to listen to this episode or any episode on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday so that you can be ready to start the challenges of the week on Monday. Listen to just one mini-sode every week. And as that week finishes, move on to the next mini-sode. You can always start all the way over back at mini-sode number one, or you can join in with the team right now. Now, these mini-sodes will only be as beneficial to you as you're willing to make them. So if you're playing along with the weekly focuses, the physical activity, and the nutrition tips, it's going to help you be more successful, as well as help with your adherence and motivation to do this with someone in your life. So grab an accountability buddy and share on your social platforms the challenges of the week. You never know who is going to be quietly watching and rooting for you. And you really never know whose life you're going to inspire just by sharing your journey, both the challenges and the successes. So let's dive into this week's growth mini-sode. This week's quote is, Start strong, stay strong, and finish strong by remembering why you started in the first place. Start strong, Stay strong and finish strong by remembering why you started in the first place. All the time I get people coming to me asking, how can I lose weight? I ask them, why do you want to lose weight? And they say, usually, I just want to be 20 pounds lighter. And I come back and I say, why? They say, because they're going to be happier or they're going to be healthier. And then I like to ask them just one more time, why? Just to see if they can peel back one more layer. Why do you want to be happier? Why do you want to be healthier? Is it to be a better example for your kids? Is it because you want to be able to be around for your grandchildren and be able to play with them? Is it so you can be strong enough to take care of yourself as you age? When you really dial in your true why, that is what's going to drive you when you lose motivation. That is what's going to fuel you through the times when you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel And you feel like you're just spinning your wheels with no results. Start strong, stay strong, and finish strong by remembering the true why you started in the first place. Now, our weekly focus is to once again be aware of the words that we use are more powerful than we know. This week, anytime you use the phrase, I don't have time to blank, finish it with because it's not a priority to me. I don't have time to blank because it's not a priority to me. Now, I find myself using this phrase, uh, I mean, very rarely, but when I do, it's usually because I'm feeling flustered with my workload or when I encounter an invitation that I'm not really sure it's a good idea for me to accept. And every single time afterwards, in my own head, I check myself. Yeah, I'm a busy person. Yes. And every day I'm loaded up with places to be, people to see, and projects to work on. But almost all of these tasks are self-imposed. Almost all of these appointments or things to do on my to-do list or coaching or, or anything of that nature, these are all things that I decided to do because they're important for me to do. But then I think about someone like, let's say, let's say Beyonce or Will Smith or Dwayne Johnson or Oprah. Am I really more busy than Beyonce? Or I think about the single mother with three kids and two jobs. I think about the college student paying their way through college with the money that they make from their full-time job while studying and attending classes. Am I really more busy than them? Here's the deal. We all have the same 24 hours in a day. We all get to choose how we spend it. 
Sometimes we say we don't have a choice in what we're doing, but we always really do have a choice. It's just that the choice of not doing some of those things would end up making our lives worse off. So we technically do choose to do them, even if we feel like we don't want to do them. The concept of time is directly proportional to priority. If something is a priority, you're going to make time for it. The next time you say you don't have time, think about this quote from Gandhi. Actions express priorities. Actions express priorities. So what you are what you are doing on a daily basis, look at your calendar. What do you see? Those are the things that you care about the most. Those are your priorities. When you audit your daily hours, what do you fill them with? Those things will do a beautiful job of showing you what your priorities are. I don't have time to work out. I don't have time to do mobility work. I don't have time to meditate. I don't have time to make healthy food. Now change your verbiage. Working out is not a priority to me. Mobility work, meditation is not a priority to me. Preparing healthy food is just not a priority to me. If when you hear yourself say those words, if they don't sit right, you may want to consider ways for you to change your lifestyle to be able to help fit those things in. It is possible. We all have the same 24 hours. Anytime this week you tell yourself you don't have time, ask yourself this, am I creating or am I consuming? Now, what the heck do I mean about that? How, what does that mean? Are you creating? Are you making things? Are you putting them out into the world? Trying to chase your dreams, trying to do things that are important to you, creating your life. Are you doing those things before you're consuming, consuming the lives of others, before you're spending an hour on Facebook scrolling, watching other people's lives, before watching Netflix, binging reality TV shows, or whatever your vice may be? Are you creating or are you consuming? If you're spending so much time of your time consuming, then maybe complaining that you don't have enough time to make your dreams come true and follow the things that you truly want to do, maybe whatever you are focused on as a mission in your life, if you're consuming, whether it's TV, food, entertainment, sports, social media, maybe we really need to look at ourselves and understand what our priorities truly are. And of course, I'm not saying that we don't all need some decompression time in our lives. There is some serious positive benefit to turning your brain off and relaxing, especially if you're a type A go-getter. But if you're turning on the TV to watch the newest episode of The Bachelor right when you get home, but you say you don't have time to meal prep for the next day, in my opinion, your priorities are out of whack. I just got to be blunt. Firstly, because The Bachelor has zero positive benefits and it actually kills your brain cells more than smashing your head multiple times with a baseball bat. It's trash that is poisoning your brain. And I have some friends that are actually on The Bachelor. But if you're watching the news, if it bleeds, it leads. And I'm sure more often than not, you'll find yourself riled up with a cortisol boost from something scary or sad. Same thing with social media. Social media is a highlight reel of unrealistic expectations and a place where even the most confident person can find themselves comparing their lives to others. If this is what you're doing, instead of choosing a task that can help you live your own dream life, then your priorities are mixed up and your actions do not match your goals and you may want to have a real heart to heart with yourself about what you truly want. Now, if I'm watching Netflix, it's going to be a documentary or something that I can learn from in the category that I'm interested in. If I'm watching a TV series that might not be educational, well, then I'm sitting on the floor and I'm doing mobility work instead of snacking on the couch in the lounge position. You know what the lounge position is. It's the one where you take your, your feet and you lengthen them out and you sprawl out with your ankles crossed and your hands behind your head with the TV remote three inches away from your empty bowl of cereal. Is this just me? Look, we've all been there. And if this, what, if this is what makes you happy and you love your life and you wouldn't want to do anything else, then I completely support you. I really do. I probably would want you to make sure that you're getting all of the aspects of your health checked off before you prioritize that kind of stuff. But I'm going to support you wanting to live that lifestyle all day long. But just don't tell me that you don't have time. And more importantly, don't tell yourself that you don't have time. Words are powerful. And you do have the same time as every person on this earth. So this week, make sure you rephrase your statement to blank just isn't a priority to me. And maybe observe how that changes things for you. 
Moving on, this week's physical activity tip is to fidget more. Yes, that's right. The person that fidgets their foot and bounces their leg up and down or taps with their fingers, that annoying person, I want you to be that person. Get more spontaneous physical movement in your life. Start getting uncomfortable with stillness, leg shaking, wiggling, shifting, pacing, tapping. All these extra non-exercise activity can significantly significantly add up to expending more calories over time. A study was done on how many extra calories were burned by fidgeters. And on average, the people who fidgeted more burned up to 350 calories more per day than those who didn't fidget. 350 calories. That's like a whole Snicker bar. That's crazy, right? If you have a very sedentary job, it should be your main focus to not be in the same position for more than an hour at a time. Can you change positions at your desk? Go from seated to kneeling to standing to split stands, one knee like a um, sem- like a semi lunge um, or walking and moving, maybe for phone calls or water breaks. Or maybe if you work from home, you can assume the position where you're lying on your belly on the floor and extending your spine, lifting your chest off the ground with you're on your forearms. And maybe you work on your computer f- like that for a few minutes. Stillness is great for when we need to decompress, when you need to slow down, when you're doing something like meditation or breath work or winding down from a crazy day. But stillness throughout the main parts of your day, especially for those of us that are immobile most of our days, it's actually slowly deteriorating our health. Now, I don't want to be too dramatic here, but I honestly think that sedentary lifestyles and the science backs this up is actually leading to shorter health and lifespans. So fidget more, move more, avoid stillness, avoid long periods of time where you don't change your position. Your desk job and your body movement can coexist. You just have to make a more concerted effort to make it happen. Set alarms on your phone. Use the on the hour, every hour method where you get up and you do something. Your boss is going to be okay with it when the productivity increases and you have a better mood. Anytime your energy level drops or you find yourself fading during the workday or unable to concentrate, these are all signals that your body needs movement. Be one of those people who get to burn those extra 100 calories because you refuse to sit still. This week's nutrition tip is to eat with smaller plates. You might have heard this one before. Studies show that if you do, you'll select less food, you'll eat less food, and you'll waste less total food, which all three are important. In, um, in these studies that looked at eating with smaller plates, the participants had the same satiated full feeling as those who ate more on the larger plates, which is very interesting. I'm going to include the study in the episode description if you'd like to dig a little bit deeper into it and see exactly what that study said. The mind is so funny, and we can use our quirky, crazy mind to kind of trick ourselves into believing something that may not be entirely the whole story. If you combine... Some of the previous week's nutrition tips with this one, you're really going to be set up for success. Drink 16 ounces of water 30 minutes before eating a large meal. Take nine deep breaths before you take your first bite. Eat the rainbow of colors on your smaller plate. And take a 10-minute walk right after every large meal. If you do these things every single time, I can guarantee you that your body composition will change. Your lifestyle and mindset around food will change. But don't try to make all these changes at once. Make one of these a habit. Do it for a few weeks or maybe one week if that's all it takes for you. Start by using smaller plates and then you can start compounding all these strategies until they all become a part of your lifestyle and it's just what you naturally do. And lastly, this week's recommendation is to listen to two podcasts from the Model Health Show with Sean Stevenson. They both have to do with the exploding topic in science, the microbiome. Now, your body has more bacteria cells than it has human cells. You are, in mass, more bacteria than you are human. You are made up of trillions of bacteria and trillions of viruses on and inside of your body. Your digestive tract is one long tube that travels from your mouth to out your backside, And all the way down this long winding tube, you're going to find bacteria who coexist with us. And they live off of what we put inside our bodies. When the food we eat feeds the good microbacteria, we see our health markers increase. 
when the food we put into our bodies, uh, let's say like processed, refined, added sugars, this type of food help feed the microbacteria in our gut and digestive tract, which we see health markers decrease. We aren't going to get rid of these guys anytime soon, nor should we want to. We should be figuring out how for, to use each for our better overall health. Like the birds in Africa who land on the elephant to help clean them off. Or the tiny fish who swim on and around sharks to help clean their body and mouth. We can use these microbacteria to help us thrive. So check out these episodes. The first episode is called The Microbiome Solution with Robin Chutkin. And Robin is spelled R-O-B-Y-N-N-E. I've never seen it spelled like that. It's really unique. And then Chutkin is C-H-U-T-K-A-N. So episode number 150 released on October 11, 2016, The Microbiome Solution. The second one's a little more recent. It's the surprising connection between your microbiome and your lifespan with Dr. Stephen Gundry. This is episode number 336, released on February 19th, 2019. So episode 180 and episode number 336. I will include these uh, links in the description of this episode. So don't worry about really memorizing that. You can just kind of scroll down and click the link and you'll be able to play them. And that's it, my friends, for this week's Growth Minisode. Each week, we will focus on something new and dial in a different aspect of physical activity and nutrition. Share with your friends and family and hold each other accountable. Post on your social media stories when you made some time and shifted your priorities to better match your health and fitness goals. This could be so helpful and inspiring to your network. And it could quite possibly change someone's life by giving them the same idea to do it. Post a video of you fidgeting, moving more, changing your work positions, or when you use smaller plates when you're eating your meals. And make sure you tag me and share your journey. And let me know if you have any suggestions or tips that would help your Live in the Dream team that I can discuss on future episodes. I'm going to be right here with you, friends, working on making us stronger, happier, and healthier humans. Until next time, keep living the dream.